previously on the Thumble Gadget channel. Several years ago I made a video about an Arduino glider. It's actually been one of my most popular videos. The thing is, here's the glider. Recently I started playing this game called Carrier Command. What I want to build is a camera drone. Maybe I'll make a new wing, maybe I'll make a new fuselage. I should just make a new aeroplane. When designing a new aircraft, the best place to start is with the wing. The wing is, after all, the most important part of an aircraft, and I'm generally suspicious of aircraft that don't have one. The airframe I used for my Arduino glider was actually an off-the-shelf model called a Blaze. This seemed to be the best place to start for my own design. This is the wing that came with the Blaze, and I've been using this as my baseline. You can see that it's made of a an injection moulded expanded polystyrene, so it's a bit like the packaging you'd get around a, a new TV or something. But it's in the shape of a wing, except where it's hit things. I think that's the dent it made when it landed in the Arduino glider video, into that bush. Of course, expanded polystyrene on its own doesn't have enough strength. So what we also have on the inside of this, and you can't see it very clearly, maybe if I hold it up in the light, are these strips that run the length of the wing and these are carbon fibre and they actually give the wing most of its strength if I if I try and bend it it's it's a very stiff structure. Now one possibility I considered before I had the foaming PLA was actually wire cutting or even CNC cutting out some expanded polystyrene to form the wing shape but the the foaming PLA is a fantastic material because you can get any wing shape you want and you can make most of the space on the inside of the wing empty space. So you can actually achieve a structure of the same sort of weight as this. But I had to think about how I can strengthen it because the PLA on its own, just like the polystyrene, isn't going to be strong enough. This wing also incorporates the servos that control the flight surfaces. These are the ailerons. The servos are mounted inside the wing section. Any kind of wing that I design is going to have to incorporate control surfaces of some kind. Of course, a lot of the learning for this project is simply going to be figuring out how to draw and to print these shapes. To start with, what we want is the aerodynamic shape of the wing, with a sparse honeycomb in between to keep things rigid. This is my test piece, it's a constant section of wing and it's an outer skin and a honeycomb on the inside. So quite a, a strong structure in itself. If I made this a metre and a half long, I don't think it would have the necessary strength. So what I needed to do was think about how to put some carbon fibre into this structure in such a way that it would strengthen it. In fact, my starting concern was whether I would be able to build a wing that's strong enough. For certain aerodynamic reasons, to minimise drag in a model aircraft wing, the wing needs to be as thin as possible. Maximum stress occurs at the thickest part of the wing, and the thinner the wing becomes, the higher the stresses become. What I had to add was a structure called a wing spar. This will take most of the wing bending loads. The structure that I went for was a classic I-beam. I've added a strip of carbon fibre at the top and bottom, and link them with a 3D printed web to form an eye shape. This is bread and butter structural engineering. This is the wing that I came up with. It's just my first test piece, but I'm quite pleased with it. The wingspan here is about a metre, but this thing only weighs 
less than 100 grams. It's very light. It's actually made of six sections that have been 3D printed. I'm not sure you can quite make out the joins, but if I show you down here, all of this is held together using epoxy. And this strip that you see through the top is the carbon fiber strip that's been embedded into the top surface. The idea is, of course, I will cover this with something. So tissue paper or maybe some of that iron on plastic stuff we'll see. But I have to say I'm really impressed with what this carbon fiber has has done. This is incredibly strong for something this light. So I'm I'm very, very pleased about that. Something I've done with this design, and it tends to be a rule for me when I design things, is I've kept things simple. There are no ailerons in this structure yet. I wanted to prove that this wing concept would work before I went to any higher levels of complexity because even this took quite a while to design in Fusion 360. Now I've proven the concept, I feel quite happy going further and adding that to the design. The challenge with that is that this wing is far too thin for the servos to sit out at the appropriate stations in the wing. So I'm going to have to come up with some method where I can locate the servo or servos at the center of the wing and then drive ailerons further out, which is normal for aircraft to be honest. So I should be able to come up with a way of doing that. So that I can illustrate just how strong this structure is, I thought a demonstration would be in order. This is the wing, it weighs 95 grams and I've mounted it on these two soup tins that are about 80 centimeters apart. And this bottle here is full of water. It's a two liter bottle, so it weighs about two kilograms. That's about six times the design weight of the aircraft. So in trivial terms, we're talking about a six G turn or the equivalent of, which this thing will never do in, in reality, I expect. So let's see what happens. Just have to balance this. And there you have it. Sometimes I love being an engineer. Control servos for a bee just hit the window. 